Rose Cakes here in Bartlesville. Um, we're doing a life hacks class. We do it once a month. Um, today, this is a beginner class. Um, we're going to kind of just do the basics of soup making. Um, today, we're going to do beef and vegetable soup. Um, so we're going to get started. I'll kind of give you some tips and tricks along the way. Um, if you've watched any of the classes before, one of our first classes was knife skills. Um, and so today we're going to kind of go back to that again because we have a lot of chopping to do. Um, I'll go over the ingredients first for our beef and vegetable soup. And this is one that's so versatile. You can use canned vegetables, fresh. You can make it as easy or as hard as you want to. Um, today we're going to use a sweet potato, a regular potato. I'm going to do one of each because these are gigantic. Um, we're going to do a red, pup, a red bell pepper and a green, an onion, garlic. Those are our aromatics. Aromatics mean vegetables that smell real good um, and give lots of flavor. We're also going to do a couple of carrots. You can do baby carrots. I just had like regular carrots that so we'll peel and chop those. Some celery. Um, I'm just using lean hamburger. Um, this is just like a, uh, it's like a 90-10, so we won't even need to drain this, but you can use anything you want, even ground turkey. And then we have a thickener, which is cornstarch, and so I'll show you how to make a slurry when we're through, which means cornstarch water, basically, and it'll help thicken your soup. Um, I've got a pot on the stove right now. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in it, kind of get it heating up, and then we're just gonna get going on this. Let's see, let's turn this up a little. This is about medium heat right now. Okay, it's working and getting warm. We're gonna start first with our onion. This I'm using a Spanish onion, which is a yellow onion. You could use a white if you want to. What's the difference between a white onion and a yellow onion? Um, I use the yellow for cooking more. I mean, you can use white in cooking too. But like I use uh, white for, they're just a little milder, I think. Um, like Vidalia's, those are a sweeter onion. Um, this one I probably wouldn't want to eat raw because it's pretty, and this one you can smell it already. It's pretty intense. And I've got a little garbage bowl here. It's like an old Rachel Ray trick. <laughs> now I'm going to move this over here by me, make it easy, but as you see, I kind of have everything already set up. I've already cleaned and washed all of these vegetables. I haven't peeled anything yet though. And then I have this heating, so I'm just going to kind of chop and make this as I go. Let me see the chopping. My bowl is in the way now. Oops, in this other way so you can see the chopping. I'm just going to dice this onion and get it going first because it takes the longest to cook. Um, today I am using a pot on top of the stove, but you could do this in your crock pot the day before and just put everything in, just like we're doing. So we're going to brown this onion. We're going to go ahead and do the whole thing. I've cut this in half. You can see that. And then I'm going to do strips like right across. It's a real easy way to dice. You just want to make sure you do your claw like we talked about before, where you don't get any, you don't want it like this, you want it like this. You don't just want any fingers in your soup. <laughs> don't want to hurt yourself. Okay. So we have our onion going. This is a really healthy soup too. You could totally make it paleo. I'm not into paleo. I'm gonna let that brown up a little and then we'll add our meat next. And you're gonna let this simmer. So, you know, you can kind of, I, I'm trying to go with all the harder vegetables first. Um, Cause they take longer to cook. So. I'm gonna peel my potatoes. And yeah, if you were doing this in your slow cooker, you could just put everything in all at the same time, even your softer veggies. Just put it on low, you could do it the night before. You cook all night. This one can be faster if you use like some canned veggies. 
What kind of potatoes are those? This is just a regular Idaho potato. Yeah. This is a real big one. And you can add as much or as little as you want. I'm going to go ahead and peel it. You could also leave the skin on if you wanted to, like if you used a gold or even like a little red potato would be good. I'm going to go ahead and do the sweet potato too. I'm going to peel it the same way. I thought this one would be good since we're kind of getting into fall. For some reason, I think sweet potatoes and fall go together. <laughs> I don't think I can set that on the stove without it beeping at me. And I'm just using a vegetable peeler. You could use a knife on this too, but you need to be really careful when you're peeling with a knife. And this little peeler, it will get you too, so you have to be really careful. Just get all the skins off. And I cook a lot with my nose, so I can kind of smell that these need to be, just kind of watch them, you don't want them to burn. I just kind of want them to start sweating. Like we can smell the onion already. And then I've got some garlic too, which is another one of our aromatics. Mm -hmm. It smells so yummy. It does smell really, really good once you get that onion and the olive oil together. So pretty much we're just prepping. And this is a good time to have like a helper. If you have a helper in the kitchen, have fun in the kitchen. You can peel the veggies together. I'm going to go ahead and add our garlic now. And before I showed you how to do a garlic clove, you, this, is, doesn't, this hasn't been peeled yet, so I'm just going to smash it with the back of my knife. Making sure to kind of tilt your knife down so you're not bringing your hand down on your edge of your blade. And then we're just going to rough chop these little cloves. And this makes the peel come off a little bit easier, which that one needs another little squish. So we're going to give that a little rough chop with the garbage bowl. And this is a good heat. This is about just like medium, maybe even creeping over to medium high. And again, keeping your fingertips out of the way. And I'm going to add that right in. If you're more, you know, the beginner, you might want to, you know, chop everything before you start firing it up in your pot just so you're not doing too many things at once. I'm used to cooking, and so I can kind of do that. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and add this hamburger. This is ground beef. If you have a fattier meat, you might drain after a little while. That's why I like using a lean, so I don't have to do that step. It's just better for you. And we're adding a little bit of fat in because we're using the olive oil, so. Which is healthy. You can use vegetable oil. And it's only, you know, about three tablespoons, I'd say, to get you kind of going. You just want everything kind of coated so it's not sticking. And break that up with the back of your spoon. You don't have to do it real fine. I like to leave, you know, big, big chunks in there. And now we've peeled our potato. Again, keeping your fingers out of the way. Just kind of cut some strips and we're going to make some little dice. So I kind of cut the potato into this. And then kind of cut like, almost looks like a gigantic french fry. And you don't want too big. You want, you know, like bite size. Potato, that's what makes it good. What else do we have? We'll do carrots next, I think. And this is like perfect fall. Today it's raining. <laughs> it's a perfect day to make soup. Yeah. Yep, you can use really anything that you have. You can do some canned corn in here. I've seen green beans. 
can use frozen, just run away. You just do all these harder, tougher vegetables first in here. I'm going to turn that up just a little bit because our pan cooled off a little because we added that meat. So everything kind of slowed down. And this is one of those, once you get it in the pot, you can kind of just walk away from it and let it simmer. Sweet potato is a little tougher. You have to really be careful with it. When you're chopping it. But again, same kind of little strips. And then we're going to do some dice. This is so like a handy setup here because you can just chop and throw it right in. <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and add the other one. I only added about half of that sweet potato because it was a big one. And at this stage, I'm gonna go ahead and add some salt and pepper. What are you doing? For some reason, the oven just really does not come off. Heat back up. Sorry, technology. We're going to switch over here to this burner, I think, maybe. Mm -mm. Go see. No. I'm done. Go wait. Okay, let me help me with the stove. Something has happened here. For some reason, it's flashing hot, but we're still using it. I don't want this one. It's beeping at me. I'm going to keep chopping. Yep, you just want to salt and pepper as you go. Technical difficulties, always. <laughs> um, about there. Yep, because I had turned it up. Because it was coming off, and then it just beeped at me and went off. But I think we're okay. It says seven, so we just won't touch it again. <laughs> Thank you. You're I'm going to go ahead and chop our bell pepper up, and I'm just going to do the same thing with it, just dice. Which is really good. So we're going to do our red one too. Now I'm just chopping these in half. And then to take out your seeds, just rip them out, just like that. And you can kind of take some of that white. Too. I think it's simmering again. I can see the steam. I can hear it. Yeah, it's on. Okay. It cools off really, really fast because it just went from like sizzling to nothing. Mm -hmm. That's okay. It happens. Working in the kitchen keeps you on your toes. I learn something new almost every day. Mm -hmm. At our shop, we have a big, giant six burner six yeah six burners but it's one of those you light with a lighter big flame <laughs> like almost cooking on fire pretty much oh wow so this flat top is kind of you know fancy technology i prefer the gas stove i like a gas stove too this is nice this is easy to keep really clean and mm -hmm. it looks nice too well, see, I was bragging when I came in because I had figured out the stove. I was like, yeah, I learned how to do it. I remembered. Now we're going to do a couple of carrots. Um, the baby carrots, if you get those, you could just plop those right in big, or you could chop those up a little bit too. 
Um, these are just regular whole carrots, and so I'm going to go ahead and use my peeler, peel the skins off. Keep a nice clean soup. You could leave the skin on, but I like to take it off. Peel those, not peeling our finger. We'll try two of those and see how that goes. And I've kind of abandoned my garbage bowl down there. Now I'm using my tray, so. You know, I think if you're the one cleaning the mess, just have fun with it. <laughs> For this, I'm just going to leave and do, I'm going to leave it whole, I'm not going to chop it in half. I'm just going to do like coins, just like that. Use the rocking motion and just kind of do, I don't know, that's probably a quarter inch little pieces. You kind of want to keep everything about the same, same size, just bite size. I think I can hear it raining. Either that or the air conditioning. That or the AC. <laughs> Alright, add the carrots in. And this is going to simmer for a while. Add some celery. And I'm going to do, I'm going to take the ends off. You want to make sure you take those off. You can use some of the leaves if they look good. These are a little bit wilted, so I'm not going to add those in. I'm just going to do clean pieces of celery. And I like to cut it in half and then half lengthwise. So you end up with like two pieces, not giant pieces of celery, which they'll cook down and get soft. And then I'm going to do it and then bunch them all together and just do like a dice on those too. So really this is like making a salad almost. There's lots of chopping. Be creative. And I did add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And I'm going to add some of this herb blend. This is like an Italian seasoning. a teaspoon. You can always add more later. You don't want too much. It's actually Tuscan herbs. <laughs> some pepper. Just want to kind of keep seasoning as you build your soup. This looks pretty good as it is. See, did I add all the veggies? I'm going to go ahead and chop some parsley. I got a bunch of parsley. This is, this is curly parsley. Or flat. I think this is curly. I just got the ends off. And then I have washed this, but I haven't went through it. I always like to kind of go through the herbs and make sure, because here's a couple of little brown wilted leaves. Just kind of check it real good in the middle. And then I wad it up in a ball as good as you can. And stems are fine. And just kind of give this a rough chop, making sure to get those fingers out of the way. And this is one whole bunch. And I'm gonna add it all. I mean, it's like potatoes, uh, ground beef, vegetables like this need a lot of flavor, so. You could, add, you could add a little less if you didn't like this much, but to me it cooks for so long and cooks down, it really has a nice flavor to it. Or you could save some and garnish your bowl. It's ready. So we did a little bit of dry and a little bit of fresh. But one or the other would be fine. And now our meat is pretty much done. It's almost done. It's got a little brown to it and our veggies have sweated. We're gonna add a couple cans of diced tomatoes, juice and all. Take some help from the store. And 
then I'm also going to add about half of a can, a little bitty can of tomato paste. This just has a real deep, intense flavor. I'm actually going to add this whole can. This is quite a bit of soup. But we went yesterday for soup ingredients, and we just went up and down the produce aisle kind of looking to see what looked good, what looked fresh, what sounded good to us. And I'm going to do a little more salt. I'm just using regular table salt. You can use kosher. It's there. About three good pinches. More pepper. And now for the juice, we're going to add beef broth. I'm, I just bought one in the can. I use these these uh, cartons of broth in my soup all the time at the shop because I don't really have time to make my own and they're really good. This one's like a low sodium so you can add your own salt. And I'm going to add this whole container. And beef broth since we're doing beef and vegetable I thought would be really good. You really could just use water. It's just, just going to give us a little bit more flavor. So I'm going to add one box of that, and then I'm also going to add some water. I just fill up. This container here, water. Do you fill it all the way up? This is about three quarters. And this is pretty much the part where you can clean up, or do some chores, kind of leave it alone. What I would do is you know, get all this mixed together. It looks and smells really, really good. And here would be a good time to taste for salt and seasoning, and then you can add a little more. And you can add, you can always add more. But you can't take it back. So if you get too much salt, you're just going to have salty soup. <laughs> but you can always add a little more. So just add a little bit at a time. And let's see, I'm going to show you how to make a little slurry. I probably wouldn't add it to this because I like a thinner beef vegetable soup, but for your thicker soups or if you're going to make a stew, this is just cornstarch. You could also use flour. I like cornstarch. You can get a bowl if you need a spoon. I just use a regular tablespoon. And you add about three. Heaping. Definitely don't have to measure. And then add some water. Probably half a cup of water. And then you're just going to stir it together. It's just cold water, just right out of the tap. It's a little bit warm, that'd be fine too. That, that all will dissolve. You want to make sure it all dissolves really, really good. And then I wait until my soup is ready, pretty much almost done, and then I add this to thicken it. And it just looks like milk. You just want to make sure that any little clumps, though, because you do not want to taste this. <laughs> but this will thicken your soup up. That's called a cornstarch slurry. And then once this kind of comes to a boil or kind of starts bubbling away, which we're not really there yet, I hate to even touch this. I'm not sure. It's like I feel something happening. It's not off, so that's good. <laughs> once this starts kind of doing its thing, bubbling away, after you check it for seasoning, you put your lid on. And you'll turn it way down to low and let it simmer down, for, I would say at least an hour, but until your all your potatoes are tender and the longer you let it simmer, the better. And the next day it's even better once you've reheated it. And this is one of those two you could add to it. If you wanted to add a couple more cans of something, you could really do anything with that. Have any questions? <laughs> I think that's about it. This is one of those you can just dip up. You can have it with, I like serving it with our rolls that we have at the shop, crackers. 
And you know, this was under probably $25, around 25 bucks to make. And you feed how many people? 30. <laughs> <laughs> or your family, like all week. And this freezes beautifully. You can put it in a container and freeze it to bring it out. Whenever you're ready for some soup. So anyway, enjoy you guys. Happy fall. See you next time.